When working with vectors, it's often important to try to think about how they look and what's the angle between them. So that's something I'm going to show you now. So we're going to first, before doing anything else, we're going to define just two vectors. We're going to do that. Um, maybe I'll do that with a nice coordinate system here, because that's always nice to do. Um, actually, nah, you know what? I don't even need coordinates. I'll just draw myself two random vectors. Uh, what color should I make them? I'll make them sort of purplish. So what I'll do is I'm going to define some vectors. So here's one. There's one. And then here's another one. All right. Uh, maybe I'll make it go a little bit further, but it doesn't really matter too much. Right? Maybe it's, uh, whoops, maybe it's that one. So I'm going to define these two vectors. Um, they probably need a name, not like Bob or Bill, although I suppose you could do that. Wouldn't that be fun actually to say Bill and then say Vector? <laughs> I'll just call it A and B for now because that's the boring way. Or actually or V and W, let's say. So V, we'll define that as V. We'll define this one as W, some vector there. And we might be concerned with the angle between them. So maybe that's something we want to know. So I'll draw that as the angle theta. That's usually what we use for angles, right? Now we can define in general, we can define this, this vector V by, in general cases, we can call it v1, v2, v3. We'll do it in this component form like this. So it's a 3D sort of vector, right? This, I've drawn it in 2D, but this could be in 3D. And we've got w, which is in the same sort of way. It's w1, w2, and w3. Let's just say like that. Notice these don't have to be vectors. These are scalar values within this. Right, but they define this whole vector here. That's why we put a little vector symbol on top of these guys and not those. All right, I've defined what I need. I've defined the players. Now we've got this weird thing. It's called a scalar product, although some people call it a dot product. Okay, this is the key thing here. This is what we're doing. So some people call it a scalar product. Some people call it a dot product. Either way, really important words. Okay, scalar product or dot product. Here we go. So we just defined some mathematical operations. And this helps us to find the angle. Now you might think, what the hell, why, why do we have an operation for this? Well, for right now, it's going to seem like it came out of nowhere, but uh, I'm going to show you where it came from. Okay, so it didn't come from outer space. I'm actually going to show you in another video. Look, look what's coming later. Uh, right here, where is it? It's coming later, I promise you. Where is it here? Oh yeah, here it is. It's coming later. Here it is, look at this. Now, where does a scalar product come from, right? This is, we're going to do this video. I'm going to show you where this horrible, weirdo thing looked like or came from. It's nice to show you where it came from. Although if you don't care about where it came from, then I'll just show you what to do, okay? It's just this equation that'll seem to come out of nowhere right now. We're going to define this operation called a dot product. So we're going to say V with a dot. And I don't mean times. This does not mean times. This is actually a vector operator. Turns out there's something else in vectors called a cross product. That is something totally different, okay? So just so you know, we have these, these operators. This one here is called a dot product. It's going to be defined as this. If I've defined my v as v1, v2, v3, and my w as w1, w2, w3, this is going to be awesome. It's going to define it as just this. It's going to be, oh, this is really easy. If I do this, I take my first number times my first number of the other one. In other words, v1, w1. And then to that, I add to it the middle one, so v2 plus w2, and so on. So plus v3 and w3. So there I would actually multiply those values. This is how I define a dot product. So that's half of the definition. Well, that was pretty easy. And the other half says this. The other half says this. It says v dot w. This is another version of this. It says the same thing. So v dot w equals, uh, we can say the length of v. Remember, it's not absolute value. This is the magnitude of v times the magnitude of w times the cosine of theta. Now keep in mind, so this, by the way, this is the whole thing. This is all of it here. So what we might want to do is define things. So theta, that's the angle between them. That's important two vectors, in this case v and w. Uh, what do we have? This right here represents, what's this? This is the uh, magnitude, right? This is the 
Maybe let's just remind ourselves what magnitude is. So magnitude of V, and of course, and W. So those are these ones. That's the magnitude. Remember how to find the magnitude? The magnitude of V, just so you know, is the square root of V1 squared plus V2 squared plus V3 squared. And of course, the magnitude of W is the same way, W1 squared and so on. So this right here is what you need. You have this weirdo thing called a dot product. As long as you don't worry too much about, just don't think they're just multiplied because they're not. Okay, this is a, this is a special operator. This is, this is reserved. This is very special. So this right here, this is it. This is the most important thing you need. It turns out that's it. That's all you need. This is it. Maybe I can even make it more exciting looking. I'll even draw some stars around it maybe. I just hope I don't mess up my writing here. Oh, I sort of did, but oh well, too bad. There you go. So I'll maybe just redraw my green ones here, but that's just finishing up. There we go, so angle between them, that's this. And these are here, those are them and them. So this is it, this is a dot product. But what this means is you can use this really helpfully, right? You can say that, oh, if I want cos of theta then, I could say, well, I can just uh, divide by both of these. So I can say that's V dot W divided by the magnitude of V times the magnitude of W. So I can also state that that comes from this. Sorry, this comes from that. But this is the sort of statement of it. There's different versions of the dot product thing, but you really, you need kind of two parts. You need the part that says V dot W is this thing where you go V1, W1, V2, W2, and so on. You need the other part that has the cos in it. These are the two parts you need. With those, you can put it together and do magic. Okay, maybe not quite, but let's see. So we have P. We're gonna define a point P that has coordinates two, three, and we'll define Q that has coordinates one, four. And maybe then I can actually try to draw it. Let me see if I can. I need some coordinates. Oh, there we go, I got some trusty coordinates with me. And I better label them X and Y. So now let's actually try to draw them. So we've got uh, the point one, two, three. Let's say one, two, three, four. Do I have everything I need? Yeah. So let's draw these points. So we've got point P, which is at two, three. So over two, up three. There we go, I'm at point P now. I want point Q, which is at one and four. There we go, that's point Q. That means I can draw myself a vector going from, remember the origin, and I can go from the origin to P. I can define that as vector OP, but that's also just vector little p. I can also call it that. <clears throat> and I can also have this one right here, vector going from O to Q, like the point O to point Q, and I'm going to call it little q here. And actually I can even then define its equation. If I go from 0 to P, well then I can say now this becomes a vector. So I can say 2, 3 as a column. In other words, I can write it like this. Now it's a proper vector. I can say, all right, P is this. And I can say Q is just 1, 4. I just like to show you all the details here if I can. Whoops. So there we go. We've got P is 2, 3 and we've got Q is 1, 4. How do I find the angle between them? I need to use this magical equation here with the angle. I need to use that cos theta is equal to v dot w over v times w, in this case, with the magnitudes. So I'm going to write that down. So I'm going to say then that cos of theta, because by the way, there is an angle between them. Here it is, and that's the angle theta. That's actually what I'm trying to find here. So cos theta equals, and instead of saying v's and w's, I'm going to use p's and q's. So just try to remember that. So we're going to use p's and q's. So I can say then it's P dot Q divided by the magnitude of P times the magnitude of Q. That's all I need. And I just got to remember how to do uh, this one, P dot Q. I got to remember how to do that. So I go back to my original one. I say, how do I do a dot product again? Oh, yeah. It's the first one like V1, W1 plus V2, W2 and so on. So in other words, here it's going to be. Um, in this case right here, I'm going to use the first one with the first one. In other words, I'm going to use this whole idea here. I'm going to say, how's this? How should I state it? I want to maybe keep it general so that it's clear here. I'm going to say P1, Q1 plus P2, Q2. All that divided by, and how do I do magnitudes? Uh, remember those, those are 
done by square roots, square root of the sum of the squares. This is going to be square root of p1 squared plus p2 squared. And this one right here is going to be square root of q1 squared plus q2 squared. This looks like a big mess, but we can just figure out the answers. Now we can figure it out. Remember, I would have to go plus all the threes if it was in 3D, but this is only in two dimensions, so this is easier. So I don't have to, you might wonder, oh, where are the W3s and V3s and things like that? Well, it's only in 2D, so I don't need them. So there we go, we're fine. So if I do this, then I can go back and actually, you know, label all these values now. So P1, that's the first one in P, so that's two. All right, two times Q1, well, that's just a one. All right. Plus, let's see now, now it's just shopping. So P2, let's see, that's the second one in P, so that's three, times the second one in Q, so that's four. And trust me, once you've done this a few times, you'll find this is actually pretty easy. Um, it just seems like a big bunch of messy stuff here, and it, it kind of is, it's a little bit ugly. And then we go square root of, and let's see now, P1, that's two squared, plus three squared, and the other one, that's for all the Q's, so it's 1 squared plus 4 squared. There we go. Now I just got to work out everything. So what's 2 times 1? Hmm. So that is uh, 2. And then what's 3 times 4? That's 12. And let's see now. I got to do the square root of 2 squared, that's 4. 3 squared is 9. This one here, 1 squared is just 1. 4 squared is 16. Bear with me, I'm just trying to show you every step because you don't need a calculator for this, not for this part at least. Uh, 2 plus 12 is 14. Let's see, 9 plus 4, that's 13. So I take the square root of 13. And 16 plus 1 is 17, so I take the square root of that. So now I know that the square root of 17 times the square root of 13, and take 14 divided by all that mess, that's cos of theta. Oh god, that's ugly. And it gets a little bit more horrible. Well, I'll just maybe rewrite it just so it's nice and as pretty as I can make it. How do I find theta, though? Because I don't want cos of theta. I want just theta. And the way I do that, remember how we undo a cosine? Because I want to undo this cos. We do inverse cos of this big mess. And so this, this big mess. Actually, wait. I don't want you to think it's a factorial. This big mess, I'll make it a sad face. Here we go. So I take the inverse cos of this mess. Well, we can use a calculator for that, because I'm going to need it, and I'm not that good. I don't know that by heart. So let's try to figure this out. Maybe I'll do the bottom part first. So I'll take square root of 13 and press enter. All right, I get that. Multiply the answer by square root of 17. And I get some answer, I hope. Oops, I didn't need that one. I needed that one just to make sure everything's clear good and now I do 14 divided by that answer that gives me this 0.94 that's that's what this sad face is this sad face is 0.94 that's what this represents <laughs> this sad face uh, but then what I do is I do the inverse cos of that as long as I'm in the right mode which I am see I press mode and check that I'm in the right mode I'm in degree mode which is good because now I want to do inverse cosine which is the little blue one here of the answer and let's see what I get. 19.6 degrees. So let's say that rounds to 20. Because I don't feel like looking at ugly numbers anymore. So let's say it's 20 degrees. And hopefully that makes sense. If you looked at it here, that looks 20-ish. It's certainly not 180 or 270 or anything crazy like that. So that seems to make sense. That's how we can deal with uh, scalar product or dot product. Okay, that's how we can do it. It may have looked ugly. And in fact, it kind of was, right? This equation here is a little bit ugly, but you can totally work on it. And in the next video, we're going to do some more examples, and we'll see, hopefully we can solidify this and make it more straightforward to you.